Authorities in Saudi Arabia want at least $6 billion from the jailed Saudi Prince Al Walid bin Talal to secure his freedom after he was arrested in a nationwide anti corruption purge, which mysteriously started to happen after President Donald Trump visited the Islamic nation. This is actually the highest sum of money ever demanded by authorities in the Gulf state, and it could involve handing over a large part of his fortune and cooperation, Kingdom Holding Company which is estimated to have a market value of just over $9 billion. The 63-year-old Al Walid is the 57th richest person in the world according to the Wall Street Journal, with an estimated net worth of $18 billion. This character has profited from the oil-rich nation of Saudi Arabia and has thought political influence here in the U.S. He has donated to various extreme left-wing charities, including the Clinton Foundation along with funding multiple organizations to spread Islam in the world, and mainly in the U.S. Extra News Feed reports Saudi royalty arrests rock Clinton Obama regime The unprecedented sweep of corrupt Saudi elites implicates Clinton, Obama, Wall Street, and beyond. In a shocking development Saturday, the Saudi Arabian government arrested prominent billionaire Walid bin Talal, a member of the royal Saudi family with deep ties to Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Arrests were carried out by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's recently formed anti-corruption committee, and included bin Talal, ten senior princes, and dozens of ministers for corruption and money laundering charges. Bin Talal, a primary shareholder of Citigroup, News Corporation and Twitter, was arrested along with dozens of other princes and ministers on Saturday. Bin Talal's arrest was part of a massive sweep of Saudi elites charged with corruption and money laundering by a newly formed anti-corruption committee headed by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Meanwhile, Royal Prince's private planes have been grounded. Known as the Warren Buffet of the Gulf, Bin Talal, one of the world's richest people, is a notorious figure in American politics with deep ties to both Obama and Clinton. Americans privy to Bin Talal and Saudi Arabia's corrupt hand in American politics may recall a 2015 tweet from then-candidate Donald Trump that foreshadowed his arrest. As the story of the massive Saudi royalty purge develops, Americans should anticipate these arrests, and the subsequent investigations will implicate Obama and Clinton in major ways. Investigations into Obama-Clinton impropriety by special counsel Robert Mueller encompass Obama and Clinton's financial ties, and dubious political alliances with both Saudi Arabia and Russia alike. Those following Trump's efforts to police Obama and Clinton's extensive criminality are aware Mueller's probe implicates Clinton crony and lobbying giant Tony Podesta, brother of Clinton campaign manager John Podesta. WikiLeaks releases of John Podesta's emails opened a Pandora's box of Democratic Party corruption when released last fall, but Tony Podesta's nefarious and long-time lobbying efforts with both Russia and Saudi Arabia are only now beginning to be broadly exposed to the American public. In August 2016, Medea Benjamin sounded the alarm as to the perils of Clinton in the Podesta's crooked Saudi dealings, with emphasis. If I told you that Democratic Party lobbyist Tony Podesta, whose brother John Podesta chairs Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign, is a registered foreign agent on the Saudi government's payroll, you'd probably think I was a Trump-thumping, conspiratorial nutcase. But it's true. The lobby firm created by both Tony and John Podesta in 1988 receives $140,000 a month from the Saudi government, a government that beheads nonviolent dissidents uses torture to extract forced confessions, doesn't allow women to drive, and bombs schools, hospitals and residential neighborhoods in neighboring Yemen. The Podesta Group's March 2016 filing, required under the Foreign Agents Registration Act of 1938, shows that Tony Podesta himself oversees the Saudi account. At the same time, Tony Podesta is also a top campaign contributor, and bundler for Hillary Clinton. So while one brother runs the campaign, the other brother funds it with earnings that come, in part, from the Saudis. Those familiar with the Citibank cabal that assigned Obama's cabinet prior to his election would also recognize Bin Talal's name, for his and Citibank's instrumental role the Obama administration's decimation of the middle class. Citigroup was showing serious strains in 2007 but the meltdown came the week of November 17th 
2008. On Monday, the firm called a town hall meeting with employees and announced the sacking of 52,000 workers. On Tuesday, November 18, Citigroup announced it had lost 53% of an internal hedge fund's money in a month's time, and that it was bringing $17 billion of off-balance sheet assets back onto its balance sheet. The next day brought the unwelcome tidings that a law firm was alleging that Citigroup peddled the MAT5 fund as safe and secure then watched it lose 80% of its value. On Thursday, Saudi Prince Walid bin Talal, a major shareholder, stepped forward to reassure the public that Citigroup was undervalued, and he was buying more shares. The next day the stock dropped another 20% to close at $3.77. All told, Citigroup lost 60% of its market value that week and 87% for the year to date. Now here is where you need to pay close attention. Just one month prior to the stock melts down, the U.S. government through its Troubled Asset Relief Program, TARP, had injected $25 billion into Citigroup on October 28, 2008. With a market cap of $20.5 billion on Friday, November 21, 2008, the U.S. taxpayer effectively owned this company.